The price of Glee has set out to unveil the mysteries behind the iconic TV show Glee, but it's been rated in the negatives by the original cast members. Because how reliable could the docu-series be if the cast isn't even in it? Imagine there's a whole TV show being made about you and your life, and you're not even involved in it. Well, that's how the cast of Glee feels when the docu-series claims to have a first-hand account of experiences on set from the cast and crew. What they really mean by the cast here is the stand-ins or extras along with people who worked on set as crew members. The stories they've got to tell are those which have trickled down a long list of listeners. And this game of Chinese whisper is quite dangerous. It's no wonder that the actual cast members are so against the idea of the price of glee that they've expressed their disgust, and I mean that in its most negative sense, on social media. From permanent cast members to those who joined in the later seasons. We had a lot of tragedies. Then you find out that somebody, you know, is not necessarily who you thought they were. No one is on board with Discovery's failure of an expose. Trust me, you're not ready for their scalding hot criticism of the show. People like Kevin McHale and Jenna Ushkowitz haven't shied away from speaking their minds. McHale started off considerably tame back in December when In Touch Weekly asked him for his opinion on the docuseries. He made it pretty clear that there was no involvement from their side and that he'd actually be more likely to debunk any false claims made by it. But the more the question was brought up, and the more he saw of it, the harsher he became in his critique. When he stumbled across a user on Twitter claiming that the cast was part of the series, he asked to see the cast, and also called it trash in emoji form. This was still pretty tame in his opinion, which he made pretty clear in another tweet that warned everyone from spreading lies about the series' production. As for Jenna Ushkowitz, the rumors became a source of motivation for her reflective podcast, and that's what you really missed, which she hosts with Mikhail. In a conversation with BuzzFeed, the actress shared that it's important for them to share their own stories. After all, it only makes sense when the people who experienced it talk about the experience as opposed to whatever Discovery's doing. Keep that in mind. It is really great then that they've got an organic source like the podcast where they can share their truth and Mikhail can do all the debunking he wants. But the way the cast is debunking the show, the podcast may not even be needed. Another person who called bullshit on the show, literally, is Cord Overstreet. He turned the entire idea down as soon as it was brought up, claiming that there was no way it could be taken seriously by anyone who knows anything about the show. Two more seasons during season four's second half. Despite ratings, critical opinion, and music sales dropping even further, the Glee train would muster on. He confirmed that the price of Glee is pretty much just clickbait with no substance to it. The Glee family is too close for any of these conspiracy theories to even be real. Becca Tobin agreed with this sentiment months before the series came out. In fact, she was aware of it being in production even before the announcement, but that didn't mean she took it seriously. Like Overstreet said, they're all a family. She knew of the series because she and the other members had been contacted by someone who very very clearly, and in Tobin's words, desperately wanted them on. This bit of information only clarifies the agenda behind the series, which automatically makes the plot lose meaning. Now that you know how the real stars of the show feel about this expose, it's time to look at the actual content of the series. Well, for the remaining episodes, the show focuses solely on New York. Gleeks can keep holding their breaths because this docuseries doesn't answer any questions. A three-part documentary, The Price of Glee, is a true crime-poisoned take focusing largely on the sudden deaths of Corey Monteith, Naya Rivera, and Mark Salling. It set out to answer some of the mysteries surrounding the iconic show, but failed miserably. Instead of solving the mystery of the Glee curse, it tries to point fingers at the show and its cast for all the losses that they've suffered. Even the fingers are pointed in the general direction of unknown members, since they have no real inside scoop. Ultimately, it's like an obsessed mega fan made an entire series on the basis of conspiracies and half-baked theories. Since there's no involvement by the actual cast, the plot relies on the testimonies of the actors, stand-ins, backup dancers, and other crew members. If you're a gleek reaching for Discovery to tune 
into the series, I'll advise you to think about that choice instead. It's much better if I walk you through all the speculation they've done on the dock, so save your time and effort. So, is the culprit behind the curse the grueling work hours? While fans got to see perfect a cappella recreations of their favorite songs, the cast had to work endlessly to get there. On top of that, they had to record studio versions of each song they did on the show. That's what instant fame gets you. If that wasn't enough work, they were sent on the Glee Live tour as soon as the first season wrapped up. So basically, they had no off days. Their lives were filled with consistent work for the first year and a half of making the series. In defense of the show, their vocals and dance moves became a worldwide sensation after the insane amount of work they put into rehearsing. Prior to his death, that Oh, I hesitate to even say it. We haven't even factored in the hours spent filming the actual show. A work schedule this intense could admittedly drive anyone insane. At the same time, the show was climbing further up in fame and the hot cast of actors had become tabloid fodder. Everywhere they went, paparazzi followed, even when they'd be filming in public. Imagine having to move out because of a stalker. That was Corey Monteith's reality. In fact, it became such a serious issue that they had to build a walled tunnel that connected the cast's trailers. Although it kept them safe, it also isolated them from the rest of the world. Now Discovery has tried to build a connection between this and the tragic events that transpired over the following years. Does the show play a role in the tragic deaths of cast and crew members? Like I mentioned before, The Price of Glee covers the deaths of Corey Monteith, Mark Salling, Naya Rivera, and a number of crew members who passed away while working for the show. While you might watch the show hoping to find out more about these deaths and how they came to be, you're going to be disappointed. There's not much that's explored there. They've just dived into the facts we're aware of already and testimonies from crew members which have formed more half-baked theories. One of these theories rests on a cast member being the cause of Monteith's relapse, with all fingers pointing at Leah Michelle. As you probably already know, the relapse led to his sudden and untimely death in 2013. There's no real connection between Monteith's unfortunate death, Salling's suicide, and Rivera's drowning. Still, they're a part of the series as they're the biggest features of the Glee curse. These events aren't directly related to the show either, nor did the series prove Glee to be the cause behind these tragedies. That's all today from my side about this disappointing docu-series. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching.